Are you tired of using PowerShell? Are you fed up creating huge unknown scripts to build the actual nano server? Are you a GUI type of a guy? Well, Microsoft made a cure for you, my friend. Nano Server Image Builder. Hello friends, this is Nick from NLB Solutions and today I'm going to look into the Nano Server Image Builder that was released by Microsoft a few months ago. Yes, actually it's not a new thing, there are a lot of videos, a lot of TechNet articles about it, how you can build images uh, from a GUI without using PowerShell and uh, it's pretty much straight straightforward thing. Next, select settings, finish, that's it. So. Um, Today I want to show you guys, and uh, this is a new thing for me as well, um, and this is going to improve our administration overall, which I think is it's nice. I think there were a lot of people that were confused building the nano server, and possibly this could, uh, uh, was or Microsoft thought that uh, this could lead into oblivion of the nano server. So what they did is they've created a small GUI, wizard that uh, uses PowerShell um, on the back, but uh, the only thing you need to do is actually click some buttons. So before we actually install the uh, nano server image generator, um, the first thing that you want to do is download the ADK um, assessment and deployment toolkit for Windows 10. I will provide the links uh, in the description down below, both for the ADK tools and both for the uh, nano server. So the first thing I want to do is install the ADK and uh, you don't have to install the whole um, the whole package. There are only few things that were required by the nano server image generator. So I don't want to participate right now. I'm going to accept the license agreement. So you can see that there are a lot of things that you can use with the assessment and deployment toolkit. But the things that we'll need are actually the deployment tools and Windows pre-installation environment, Windows PE. So the other things I, I can deselect and the whole installation will be around uh, 3, 3.5 gigabytes in size. Uh, there it is, 3.4. So I'm going to click install, click yes, and uh, I'm going to pause the video until the uh, installing uh, the, the feature will finish. Now that the wizard finished installing my uh, Windows assessment and deployment kit, I'm going to close this window and I'm going to proceed by installing the uh, nano server image builder. So uh, this is a small package that is going to install pretty fast. I noticed that there are some glitches and bugs and sometimes it gives us an error. But if you do a straight uh, restart on your um, computer or the virtual machine, it should be okay. So it finished successfully as well. And I'm going to open the um, image builder itself. So if you open this, it it looks really modern. It w it looks Windows uh, uh, two uh, Windows Server 2016-ish. So uh, you have two options. You can create a bootable USB media that you can use to uh, boot your uh, physical server from, or maybe a virtual machine if you'd like. Or you can create the uh, a nano server image, and this includes creating a VHD, VHDX, or a WIM image, a Windows image. Um, that you can use on a later state. Here you can see that you have some information about um, what you need as a prerequisite. Uh, so I'm going to skip this window. And on the first step, what you actually need to do is you need to select the location for Windows Server Media Source. This is the actual Windows 2016 ISO image. I have this right here mounted on my virtual machine, so I'm going to select it and click Next. And here you need to agree the license agreement, so I will need, need to click next. And here you have the option to select what is the deployment uh, method that you're going to use. Is it a virtual machine image or a physical machine image? In my case, it's going to be a virtual machine image because uh, what I'm going to do after I create it, I'm going to copy it over to a Hyper-V uh, machine and I'm going to start it to see if it's working. And we can confirm that uh, this is a success or a failure. So I'm going to browse to select the location where I want the image to be created. So I'm going to create a new folder called Nano and open the folder and name the server NLB Nano 
name the VHD more like it. Uh, nano zero one. So you can see that uh, right here the type is VHD. So I'm going to save it. You can set the max size extension for the uh, VHD or VHDX. Of course, I think if you go here, you have the option to select VHDX as well as an output type or maybe select it right here. I think I will go with VHDX. So uh, I'm going to leave it uh, 8 gigs and the uh, directory copy image creating the log files will be under C nano as well. So I'm going to click next and you can see that you have uh, um, some more prerequisites that uh, is asking you for the basic configuration which is know your network configuration know the name of the target server you will be deploying with the created image or have drivers located in easy accessible folder so i'm going to click next to this one and here is the actual easy part do you remember with the actual powershell script we had to choose packages and install them here everything is gui type so you can choose the addition of the nano server and all the packages with the only a tick box to um, add to your nano server so as a test i'm going to again add the iis package because it's going to be easy for me to test and confirm that it's working actually so just waiting for it to load now that it's fully loaded, it took a few more seconds, I'm going to select standard, but you can select data center if you'd like, as your nano server edition. And again, it's going to take some time, I assume that uh, it's browsing to see what are the available packages that uh, it can add to the server itself. So now that we have the options available, I'm going to select the file server role and other storage components and the other one is the web server IIS. I'm going to click next. In here, this is a cool thing. If you know what is going to be the hardware that you're going to deploy the nano server or the machine in general, uh, make model and such, you can add here custom drivers that can be installed into the image so that the hardware uh, or the operating system can communicate with the hardware. I'm going to leave this blank for now. Here, I need to specify the name of the nano server and the administrator password. Okay, the time zone, I'm going to leave this as the default. And the next thing is I'm going to try and join the nano server to the domain. I just want to verify that this is um, this is going to work. So we have two options. You can choose a domain blob file. Um, if you remember in the last nano server we've generated the domain blob file. Here I'm going to try um, to see, but I can see that it's going to need me to uh, create, pre-create an account that's already in the domain. So I'm going to switch fast to my domain controller and do this before I continue. So after I've pre-staged the account for my nano server, I'm going to click next and continue. And here we have different options for uh, remote connectivity. You can enable virtual LANs or you can configure the server to pick up an IP address automatically from a DHCP or manually set an IP address. So the first thing that I want to do is I'm going to enable the Windows, uh, the WinRM and remote PowerShell connections from all subnets because this is a thing that I want my server to be accessible. And I'm going to set a um, IP address because I don't have a DHCP address giving IPs right now. So once again, I'm going to choose an IP address that I know that it's free at the moment. The subnet mask is going to be 255.255.255.0. The gateway address will be 10.0.0.254. And the IPv4 DNS address will be 10.0.0.1. I'm not going to put any IPv6 addresses, but if you have such in your domain, you can um, put the information in here. So uh, as you can see, this is the basic configuration, the basic uh, settings that are needed for you to create your nano server. Of course, you can uh, have additional advanced settings like add servicing packages or embed files, scripts or binaries or set remote options or set debugging methods. For this video, I don't think that this is uh, this is needed. 
um, only creating the above steps, the basic configuration will be enough for you to create your basic nano server image and use it in your test lab. If you are doing this in production, it's probably a good idea to go through the advanced settings. So I'm going to create the new base image. It's going to show me all the settings that I've uh, configured. And when I press create, it's going to execute the same PowerShell script that we used in the past to create it. But instead, this time, the wizard is doing call for us. So I'm going to again pause and resume when this is done. So after the job finished successfully, I'm going to look into the folder where I expect my VHDX file to be. So if I go to nano, I will see that I have the nano server hard disk image which is currently 500, around 500 megabytes. So if I close this window, um, the log file should be populated as well, which is, uh, you can see a lot of information using the uh, DISM. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to copy this VHDX to one of my Hyper-V hosts and start the virtual machine, create a virtual machine and start it to confirm it's if it is fully functional. Now that I've configured my virtual machine in my Hyper-V server, I'm ready to uh, go ahead and start to see if indeed my nano server is going to boot up or if it's going to be a complete failure. So uh, let's see if I'll be able to uh, fail in front of my audience. Okay, it's currently connecting. And there you can see the nano server recovery, recovery console. So I'm going to log in with the administrator account and password. And let's see if everything is pretty much configured as it should. So we have the domain NLB lab right here. We have the administrator account and the Windows Server 2016 standard edition. I'm going to check the networking settings to see if everything was properly configured. And no, uh, it seems that uh, even that I've selected the option for the uh, static IP address configuration to be uh, added, it's still uh, choosing to use the DHCP. So I'm um, not sure if this is a bug or uh, if uh, the uh, image generator was uh, buggy. I'm not sure about that, but you need to uh, check and uh, configure and double check your settings before you go ahead and uh, move your server into production. So I'm going to change the setting right now to DHCP disabled. I'm going to add a IP address. Let's see if I'll be able to do this. 10.0.0.30. The subnet mask is 255, 255, 255, And the default gateway is 10.0.0.255. 254. So I'm going to press enter to save the settings. Okay, operation succeeded. And now I can see that the interface is uh, with the static IP address. So let me just confirm this and try to ping the server to see if it's going to respond. And it seems that it's not going to respond for some reason still. So let me just double check the uh, network settings into the firewall, inbound, inbound firewall rules. Let me double check. Okay, core networking. Let me see what will happen if I try to open the website that we've configured as a package. 10.30. Okay, even that there is no ping currently enabled to the nano server, it seems that it's able to respond on the um, port 80, which is the IIS HTTP port. So the server is running, it's reachable, and the IIS um, is enabled and working on the server. So, um, yeah, um, in the end, it seems that if we, if we have to make the conclusion on the video, it seems that uh, even the uh, if the um, 
a nano server image builder is really straightforward thing for you to do uh, you need to double check your settings and double check the server that you've deployed because from my my point of view it seems that there are a few things that uh, are still or still needs to be addressed before we can confirm that the nano server image builder is fully functional uh, this was uh, Nick from NLB Solutions. Uh, if you like the video, you can always click the uh, click this subscribe uh, button, and uh, that way you will receive notifications when I upload new videos about cool things related to uh, Windows Server 2016 and other technologies. Uh, thank you very much for viewing. Again, thank you very much for the support, for all the comments, for all the questions. I'm going to try and answer them as soon as possible, as you all know. This was once again Nick from NLB Solutions, thank you very much and see you soon.